So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Sarah Nielsen now at Consumers Energy. Sarah? Hi, good morning. Uh, I'm Sarah Nielsen with Consumers Energy, and we're proud this morning to join our friends at DTE to announce the new My Community Solar, which is a first in the nation partnership telling the story of community solar here in Michigan. That together, Michiganders are investing billions of dollars into community solar projects, creating a shared sustainable experience that is served by Michigan's statewide regulated electric grid, regardless of where you live. At Consumers Energy, we have one of the boldest plans in the industry to invest in renewable energy, including 8,000 megawatts of new solar energy over the next two decades. We are all in on solar. Our Solar Gardens program allows customers to promote a cleaner energy landscape without the upfront costs and long-term maintenance of owning your own solar panels. So here's how it works. You subscribe to your desired number of solar blocks. Each block is a half a kilowatt of solar-generated electricity. We use those subscriptions to go build solar uh, faster than we would have done in our normal plan and generate that solar energy. You are able to support clean energy going to the grid and pay that small fee of your subscription on your monthly energy bill. And then you also receive a credit for the solar energy that you produce. That's all happening on your bill. This is a program that allows customers to invest in a cleaner and greener future for Michigan without needing to spend thousands of dollars to own your own solar array to provide the economic, environmental, and or community benefits. Already, we have two solar gardens on the west side of the state and a partnership with the city of Cadillac, making participating in solar simple and easy for our customers. Our latest addition is that Cadillac Solar Gardens. It's a repurposed brownfield site with a manufacturing history that dates back to the late 1800s. Before we built solar on that site, it had been vacant for more than 30 years after the closure of an auto manufacturer, making this our very first brownfield to brightfield project, helping us to protect our planet, spur economic development in the community, and allow us to provide cleaner and more reliable energy across the state. It also builds on our strong and ongoing commitment to providing low-cost solar energy to our customers. So bottom line, it's a win-win for all those involved. My Community Solar is going to tell our story of a more inclusive, equitable approach to building a community of solar investors, powered by all of us and supporting a greener future in Michigan. This approach runs contrary to the out-of-state developers who seek to destabilize Michigan's regulated energy market at great cost to all of us just to line their own pockets. And by the way, we always support union jobs going to local workers at our solar facilities. Any approach to fighting climate change must ensure that the transition to that sustainable economy is just and that workers are not left behind. That's how we grow real communities and do so in an inclusive and equitable manner, by leveraging these investments to support jobs and manufacturing growth right here in Michigan. Thank you. And with that, I will turn it over to Knox Cameron. Sarah, thank you, and good morning to members of the media. The virtual screen behind me is from the city of Detroit's O'Shea Solar Park, an integral part of DTE's goal to get as clean as we can, as fast as we can, while taking affordability and reliability into account, and doing so in a way that is equitable and inclusive for all of our electric customers. When this solar installation was constructed a few years ago, nearly 40% of the electrical apprentice labor was from the park's surrounding neighborhoods. At DTE Energy, we believe that we have a responsibility to help strengthen our communities. O'Shea's park renovation has created a space that's home to an urban pollinator garden, resurfaced basketball courts, walking paths, play fields, a community gathering space, new trees and flower beds, and 7,400 solar panels producing enough electricity to power 450 homes with clean energy, generating more than 1 million in tax revenue for the city of Detroit. We also believe that no one should be barred from investing in our state's growing renewable energy marketplace. All DTE customers can easily subscribe to our locally based community of wind and solar projects through our My Green Power program. 
Together, Michigan's largest energy producers are promoting and delivering projects that serve like-minded communities and consumers who share a common interest in providing economic, environmental, and community benefits of renewable energy and solar power. You heard about the work our colleagues are doing at Consumers Energy, and together we're empowering Michiganders to invest in solar power in the most inclusive and equitable way, growing a statewide community of solar subscribers. Today, DTE generates enough clean energy to power almost 700,000 Michigan homes. One way we do this is through our Migreen Power Renewable Energy Program. This is a subscription-based renewable energy program available to all our electric customers. My Green Power provides customers with an easy, flexible, and affordable renewable energy option without the concerns of variable contracts and other predatory practices common with out-of-state private developers. You can enroll for as little as a dollar a month. Enrolling in My Green Power supports further the development of new wind and solar projects. Signing up brings more clean energy to the statewide power grid enabling everyone to benefit. That's why we're adding thousands of subscribers to My Green Power every single month. My Green Power is one of the largest community renewable energy programs in the United States, averaging 500 new residential customers on a weekly basis. Thanks to the commitment of My Green Power customers, DTE is adding several new large-scale solar projects over the next three years. My Green Power is responsibly regulated, highly inclusive, and highly responsive to our stakeholder communities. As you hear about community projects in the future, I close my comments with three important questions to ask about them. Does it benefit customers on the grid equally? Is it responsibly managed and accountable to state and local regulators? And three, will it be leased or purchased from out-of-state providers who may walk away from the upkeep and maintenance after the sale? Or will it be watched over by a homegrown company with a stake in this long-term success? Michigan's local energy providers are committed to the My Community Solar Education campaign because people need to know that these programs work for everyone. I will now ask Brian Kalka, Director of Renewable Energy Solutions, to offer some closing comments. Thank you, Knox, and good morning, everyone. As one of Michigan's clean energy leaders, I'd like to start by saying that DTE Energy has developed some of the largest wind and solar installations in the Midwest, and we are on a pace to triple our renewable capacity over the next 10 years. To date, DT has driven $2.8 billion of investment in Michigan-based renewables, and we expect that amount to double by the end of 2025. Quite simply, we are doing as much as we can, as fast as we can, to provide our customers and the state of Michigan with clean energy that is both affordable and reliable. As part of this journey, we are working on a number of innovative community solar projects. One example of this is that we have recently embarked on an ambitious pilot program to bring community solar projects to three un underserved communities in our service territory. These communities are Detroit, Highland Park, and River Rouge. Approved this year by the Michigan Public Service Commission, these projects represent 16 months of dedicated work with multiple stakeholder groups that included representatives from environmental groups, community organizations, government entities, and businesses. The goal with this pilot is to help low-income customers and communities participate in the benefits of renewable energy. With solar, DT traditionally focuses on building universal scale projects that provide clean energy to our customers at the lowest possible cost. However, we also recognize the need to increase access to clean energy for low-income communities and we expect that our community partners, the Michigan Public Service Commission, and DTE will collectively learn from these pilots and apply our gain knowledge in the future. As part of this pilot, DTE will partner with a number of external stakeholders to identify funds 
and DT will approve, develop, and operate the projects recommended by the stakeholders. I would also like to mention another innovative project that was announced just a few weeks ago. DT announced that it is moving forward with a plan to build a My Green Power community solar project in Washtenaw County. The 20 megawatt facility will be the largest in the region, and it is designed to support the city of Ann Arbor and Pittsfield Township with achieving their respective clean energy goals. In addition, all DT electric customers will have the opportunity to subscribe to this project through the My Green Power program. This new community solar project will be located on a capped landfill and a greenfield site owned by the city of Ann Arbor. DT has recently issued an open request for proposal for the engineering, procurement, and construction of the project, and we anticipate that it will begin generating energy in 2023. That concludes my remarks, and with that, I'd like to turn it over to Pete Turnis. Thank you, Brian, uh, and thanks to the rest of our speakers. Uh, this is where we'll open up to the Q&A portion of our uh, session here. Uh, so what I'd like to do is bring them all back up on camera. Thank you. And um, we'll start with uh, Brianna Noble, who asked a couple questions. Brianna, if you wanna um, uh, repeat your questions or if you'd like me to, I could certainly do that. Um, sure, I can ask them. Yep, thanks. Okay. Um, yep. How much, um, question, just to start off with, with um, so how much is the subscriptions like per kilowatt hour per month that was mentioned? And I think that there was mentioned that there was like a tax credit that goes off, comes with that. So I guess just ultimately sort of what is the result on rate payers' bills? And then how many subscribers currently to date do the subscription programs have? Brian, if you want to start. Sure, from the DTE side of things, we have a couple of different product offerings um, for our residential small business customers. And for our wind only product, it's around two cents a kilowatt hour um, added onto your bill. And for a product that's a 50-50 split between wind and solar projects, it's around uh, three cents. A, a kilowatt hour. Um, however, there are some, some market um, fundamentals that are part of that particular uh, cost. And in the month of September, actually, the actual cost to customers was, was less than 50% of the numbers that I just stated. But on average, it's around um, the two and three cent uh, per kilowatt hour, respectively. Um, from an overall enrollment standpoint within DT's My Green Power program, we have 41,000 residential customers uh, who are enrolled right now. And as Knox mentioned, we are enrolling residential customers at the rate of around 500 per week. Uh, we also have uh, four, over 400 small business customers enrolled. And we have approximately 34 large business customers who are enrolled. And examples of those large customers are rather iconic brands such as General Motors, Ford, University of Michigan, the state of Michigan itself, Bedrock, et cetera. Yeah, and I can give um, more detail. For, so our Solar Gardens program, which was the one that I highlighted, this is a residential program. Today we've got 900 customers that are subscribed. And um, you can subscribe for one or more different blocks. Each block costs $9. And then for each block, you get a credit. And it's actually a credit directly back on your bill. So it's not like a, a tax credit. It goes straight back on your bill, depending on how much solar was generated that month and what the energy market prices are. And so this year, on average, it's been about four dollars and forty cents per month. So you're getting a, you're paying about nine, getting about half of that back um, as a credit on your bill. So this is definitely a product that's about investing in the future and helping us get there faster, rather than being like a, a money making opportunity. But it does give you something back that way and helps you participate in the market. Thank you. Um, I'd like to turn it over to John Lindstrom. John, um, I could ask your question or if you want to read it. Hi, thanks. I, I, I'm curious uh, with the timing of this announcement, uh, as you guys know, especially at DTE, 
Ann Arbor officials are talking about a sustainable energy utility, and Ann Arbor officials have been very uh, critical of DTE in the last several months. Is there any coincidental timing connection between announcing this kind of a, a program and, and maybe trying to discourage local communities from engaging in, in things like sustainable energy utilities? Uh, DT and the city of Ann Arbor have, have been partners uh, with respect to, to clean energy for a number of, for a number of years. Uh, we have been working ex very, very extensively uh, with their environmental and sustainability office. And one of the byproducts of that is, is the landfill uh, solar project that I discussed during, during my respective remarks. We continue to have um, significant dialogue with the city of Ann Arbor and we definitely expect that we will continue to engage with the city of Ann Arbor to, to help them uh, achieve their respective carbon neutrality goals here by the end of this particular decade. Great, thank you. Okay, um, I think I'll ask uh, Andy uh, if you have uh, want to read your question. Sure. And then I'll go to Drew at the Sun Times. Great. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify how much uh, you know in capacity do, do both utilities have planned for these specific community sort of subscription-based solar projects? I can start um, on the consumer side. So. Um, What's neat about this is that it can expand um, with demand. So currently today we've got 10 megawatts that are approved from the commission, ready to go. We've got 4.5 of that built out already. So we already have within the regulatory um, horizon, we have the room to double that. Uh, but then there's then you know as there's more demand, we can always look to increase that as we go. Um, when you look at like our broader clean energy plan, I mentioned we've got that eight gigawatts vision of solar by 2040. So as we hear demand from customers, we can increase the amount of that um, subscription-based solar project to match. Yes, and I'm happy to jump in as well. And thank you for that, Sarah. Yeah, the, the, the beauty of these community-wide programs that DT and Consumers has deployed is that it's here to support our customers. So as customers want it, um, we are developing these projects to support their needs as well. And current state, we have ample um, capacity for our residential and small business customers. And as our large customers, as Brian mentioned, and the Fords and the GMs, as their needs continue to grow, uh, we continue to support them with these types of uh, solar projects. Okay, thanks. Oh, one quick follow-up, if I could, Pete. Um, I was wondering what the, um, what the utilities position uh, is on, on legislation from earlier this year uh, House bills 47, 15, and 16 that would that would essentially allow for private developers to do these types of community subscription-based projects. Yes, I think from our from our perspective, we are supportive of the growth of renewables across the state of Michigan. Um, our work today and moving forward is to educate Michiganders on the work that Consumers Energy and DTE is uh, doing today, has done already, and plans to do in the future, is to deploy programs like the ones that we have spoken about um, in, in our remarks. Um, because they're existing community-based programs that drive value for the state of Michigan, both from an environmental perspective, but also um, a community development perspective. Okay, uh, Drew, um, I see your question here. I don't know if you wanna uh, speak about it, but, uh, and, and maybe uh, Brian or Sarah, um, you could talk about the, the, the questions about transparency on these projects, um, about the, you know, how much we go through with the Michigan Public Service Commission on these details for these projects. Um, Drew, is there anything else you want to add to that? Okay, we'll leave it at that. His question, um, how much are the participants in these programs uh, available this, to see the transparency in these projects? Yeah, well, I can say 
um, these projects are no different from any of the other construction that we do as a regulated utility. So everything that we do um, is you know, brought through a regulatory process um, to be assessed. Uh, so these projects are no different. Um, and I think what's also exciting is that all of our community solar projects that we've talked about here are all based in Michigan. So you can see these, you know, in real life as well when you're driving around various places around the state. So I think that's maybe not what you meant by transparency, but I think it is a nice feature. Um, and then the other thing I said to your second question about how much input will investors have, I would say to date, um, it's been more focused on looking across the state and figuring out um, the best, most cost-effective place to um, capitalize on that solar energy uh, and keep the cost down so that we can bring the best possible product to our customers. Um, we do, uh, we are exploring with our customers um, on a different option that we just put in a filing this month where we would work with an anchor tenant to um, confirm and develop a specific site where they would have more input as that anchor tenant. Um, this is in relation to, I mentioned again, that eight gigawatts of solar we're looking for and working with communities that are motivated to, to do that. So we're excited about that anchor tenant option, but I would say overall, it's all just about where can we put it within our territory that's gonna be um, the most equitable place uh, for customers to sign up for solar. Brian or Knox, anything to add to that as far as how we work with our communities to let them know um, how these projects are progressing? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to jump in as well. I think um, our, our work in the community is, is, is certainly prevalent, but I think the biggest thing is folks can take comfort knowing that consumers energy and DTE energy are governed by the Michigan Public Service Commission, okay? And these are approved uh, community programs uh, for our customers, available to all of our customers. And that is the important piece in terms of governance and oversight here is that the Michigan uh, Sur Public Service Commission uh, drives a lot of that work. Uh, independent of, of the MPSC, uh, I will say both programs also has its own third party auditors to ensure that this type of work uh, is on the up and up, right? And uh, fundamentally speaking, uh, that is the work that we want to do. Uh, the other key piece of, of the work as well is from an affordability standpoint, okay? So the program is available to everyone, uh, which is which is key, and um, we make it available from a, a, a cost-effective standpoint for everyone. Okay, it looks like that's what we have um, had so far for the written questions. At this point, um, I'd like to open it up and see if anyone um, has any additional questions or follow-up. Yeah, this is Brianna Noble with the Detroit News. Um, I know in the news release it mentioned um, non-regulated local energy projects, how they can increase the cost for Michigan residents. I was wondering if you could speak to how so and how much of a concern this is for both companies. And there was also mentioned during the presentation about out-of-state providers. Uh, if that's something similar, is, is that a separate concern if you could kind of go into what um, the sort of uh, view on that is from both companies, that would be great. Um, and then also just wanted to ask, how will this education campaign look? Does it include like television ads? Like how how is the word being going to be distributed? And then um, if you could just talk about a little bit more about the inclusivity part that was emphasized, um, you know, how, I mean, obviously this there's not like a um, you know reduced cost for um, low income areas or anything like that. It's from the sound of it. So if you could just kind of take uh, emphasize or you know sort of clarify on what this means for you know um, uh, lower income individuals or people who have been historically disadvantaged. Thanks, um, Brian. Do you want to start? Um, I know we're working on some low income projects, um, and then. Um, yeah, and then Sarah, I, I can see you're interested in answering as well. Absolutely, Pete. Uh, great question, Bjorn. Thank you for that. So as Pete mentioned, uh, here at DT, we, we have um, an acute focus on ensuring these projects are accessible and that everybody can benefit from uh, renewable energy across our territory. 
and in particular related to a low income customers, we recently received approval from our Michigan Public Service Commission for, for two pilot programs um, that will help us in this particular uh, regard. Uh, the first pilot is, um, is one where we can receive donations from anybody, any of our subscribers, any of our non-subscribers, and we essentially use the dollars that we receive to purchase these subscriptions into My Green Power for these low-income customers. It provides them access to renewable energy, but also as part of that, the low-income customers have the potential to receive bill reductions on a monthly basis upwards of 25 to $30 a month on average. So we're really, really excited about that. We have a number of, of, of companies and individuals who have expressed sincere desire to participate in this type of contribution uh, pilot, and we're definitely excited to see where that, uh, that goes. The second pilot, which is, is the one that I referenced during my particular remarks, um, it, it's very similar in a lot of regards to uh, the first pilot that I just discussed, except that the, the main difference is the contributions we receive from third parties will actually fund, partially fund the development of some of these projects in the underserved communities. Detroit, Highland Park, River Rouge is, as an example. Um, DT is also going to be contributing to these projects, but what we will have happen is once these projects are constructed in these communities, uh, there will be uh, low income participants for these particular arrays and similar to the first pilot, they have the opportunity to A, uh, decarbonize their electric footprint and B, actually receive bill credits on a monthly basis. And, and Sarah, I don't know if you wanna talk through the consumers piece. Yeah, yeah. So thanks for the questions, Brian. I'll, I'll try to answer them. Um, so the, the first piece was around um, the equity and the out-of-state developers that we mentioned. So um, as as the utility here in Michigan, what DTE and consumers are able to do that really no one else can't is look across the entire territory and make sure that uh, the costs are equitable and that the energy delivery system is just across everyone. Um, and that's just by design in terms of like the, the service that we offer to Michigan. Um, so the challenge when you have um, developers come in is that they're only looking at one little piece of that grid and making it work for those particular customers who um, are able to oftentimes able to afford um, that so those solar benefits um, but those benefits and costs are not then equally distributed across the grid and what you end up is that in an issue where it's not just and it's not equitable to be able to spread that across so that is the issue that we see here um, so we're very excited about solar, as I've already mentioned, we'd love to see more solar, a lot more solar in Michigan, but that's the piece that um, is tricky, is being able to make sure that it's an equitable and just transition. So hopefully that makes sense there. And then, yeah, so in terms of specific program offerings for low income, I think very similar to Brian, what Brian outlined, um, this year we launched a program called Sunrise that's focused on low income customers. And what's neat there is that um, you do have a, a sponsor subscriber. Um, in this case, it was um, the uh, the Eagle, the um, Michigan Environmental Group, um, was able to channel funds into this and sponsor low income customers as the subscribers um, who got those solar blocks. So in effect, that that nine dollar a month is covered um, by the nonprofit, uh, but the customer is able to get that four dollar fifty cent benefit per month. So it's a way for them to participate in solar energy um, and also get that credit. Um, and also for those nonprofits as well, it's a way to um, to be a part of that as well. So I think it's a great offer option. Brian said he's already getting a lot of interest as well from others. It's a great way to for for companies, organizations, nonprofits who are interested in promoting solar to have that happen as well as funnel benefits to our low income customers. And Brianna, to address your question about the education campaign, this is really the first step of it. You know, um, we decided the timing was right because 
both of our solar projects are maturing to the point where we want people to know about it. They're gaining momentum, and um, in particular, we wanted the media to know about it. Um, but then as time goes on, you're going to see more stories as these projects uh, come online about the, the people that are involved in them and uh, how they're helping those communities. And you'll see that in various um, you know, ways through social media or for more traditional uh, media outlets. Thank you. Any other questions uh, from the group we have here? Okay, with that, I'll turn it back over to Katie for close if you want to. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you so much. If you have any questions, please feel free to send a note to either Pete or myself. We're sending out a news release um, right after this call, so you'll have that in your inboxes. And then again, if you want a copy of the recording, video, audio, any of that good stuff, please reach out to us. We'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.